Hey, welcome to that Innovation Production. Today I'm going to be showcasing for you this phone, which is the Nokia 8110, or also known as the banana phone, because it's curved like a banana and its color is like a banana. Now you may be tempted to buy this phone because, well, it's it's retro, so retro is kind of cool, and it brings back memories of the phones back in the late 90s and the the 2000s. Um, as you remember in the in the film Matrix, uh, there was a slide out phone which Neo used. Now another reason you may want to buy this phone is because it's compact and it is compact. So compare this to my Xiaomi Redmi Note 7 which is that size and so it's quite a bit of a size difference in that and also in terms of well the thickness is actually a bit thicker but it's a lot more compact. So that's a good reason to get this phone. You may want to get a phone that's quite simple for maybe like an older relative that probably doesn't know how to use a smartphone. So for an older person this may be a bit of a challenge to use because the buttons are actually quite small. And the directional button here is not very user friendly. There's a big OK button in the middle, but the buttons at the side are actually quite thin if you can see that. So you pretty much have to almost use a fingernail to press on it to change the direction. So that, that's a bit fiddly. So you, you may want to reconsider this for you know if you want to get the phone for an older person. Um, the numbers on the on the buttons are actually quite faint as well, um, so it may not be that user friendly. In terms of the price, it's quite cheap. It's about seventy US dollars, about ninety to hundred Australian dollars. But for that price, you can actually get a cheap Android smartphone. And if you've gotten used to using smartphones, you can't go back. For example, when you're typing text, it's actually painfully slow typing on a on one of these old like, feature phones uh, as compared to using a, a swipe kind of um, action on your smartphone. And nowadays the smartphone's getting bigger, so it's a lot easier to type on the, the on-screen keyboard. Now if you're from an older generation, you would probably know that the text input on these things are really slow. You've got regular ABC, which you have to press buttons multiple times to get to the letter that you want. Or you've got predictive where you can just press each button like once or, or twice and it comes up with text prediction. But you know, once you've used a smartphone and you've input words using a smartphone, you can never go back to this. It's just it's just way too hard and too fiddly. It takes me about three times as long to type a message in this. So there you go. It is compact, I'll give you that. In terms of price, you have many cheap Android smartphones around the same price range. In terms of usability, it is a bit fiddly to use and if you're wanting it for an older person, it may prove quite difficult for them to use it because of the small buttons and the directional pad which is not very user friendly. So is the retro factor enough to make you want to get one of these? And I would say definitely not, so a big thumbs down for that. So would I recommend this phone? Not really unless you have some spare cash to spend on an extra phone. I mean this one I'm using for work as a secondary phone, so that's quite okay. But apart from that, I really wouldn't recommend this phone. Thanks for watching.